tragedy struck a young man and his mother as they were flying back from Australia to India. During the Air China flight, the mother had a heart attack and passed away. An emergency stop was ordered and the Chinese airliner set a course for Zhengzhou Airport where 63-year-old Rita Mera was removed from the plane and sent to Henan Provincial Hospital morgue. This happened just days after the Chinese government introduced the strict lockdowns to contain the threat of the COVID-19 virus, which only made the situation for her family even worse. For almost a month, her son had been trying to get his mother repatriated to India, and the fight is still ongoing. This has brought up very important questions. What happens to a foreigner when they die in China? So you think you know China? Or at least what other people have told you about it. And that's fine. But let us tell you what China is. To, to us. us. Or even better. Let us show you. Ni hao, this is Jack from the China Crew Channel. Coming to you from Xi'an, China. Reading Rita Mera's story had touched on a personal note for me. As just five years ago, I too lost a loved one in a foreign country. My father passed away while on a trip from South Africa to Mozambique, two neighboring countries. It took my mother months and hundreds of sleepless nights to be able to get my father repatriated back to South Africa. I was in Thailand at the time and had flown home to have an empty casket funeral while my father was still in Mozambique. South Africa's crippling bureaucracy aside, Repatriation is no easy task in of itself. There are procedures to follow, certificates and permits to acquire, financial institutions such as banks and insurance companies will throw up roadblocks, and then the very expensive transportation costs to consider. This is something all expats must consider when leaving their own countries to seek opportunities outside. Accidents can happen anytime, anywhere, and there are strict guidelines and laws to consider for each country, many of which do not coincide with your own country's regulations. Whether you're traveling yourself or a loved one is, this is the responsible thing to learn and be aware of. So what happens if you die in China? As I am South African, I went straight to my embassy's website. When looking up the procedures on the website, I was met with a small article which I have summarized as thus. The department, in collaboration with its representatives abroad, provide logistical assistance and advice to the next of kin in the event of the death of a South African citizen abroad. It goes on to conclude services such as assistance with obtaining permits for the transport of human remains, forwarding contact information for undertakers to the next of kin, assistance with obtaining quotes for transportation of remains, cremations, local burials, if requested by the families. They offer to provide information on local conditions and laws. And it then reminds you that the South African government does not render any financial assistance pertaining to the death of a South African citizen abroad. So this means that all the costs of dealing with your remains is on your family and the relevant insurance companies if you're insured. And lastly, there is a link on the page for if you require more information, which if you click it, gives you an error 404 dead end. These are the procedures and requirements for dealing with a foreigner dying in China. Death needs to be confirmed. If a foreigner is found dead, it needs to be reported to the company and local police or the Chinese Foreign Affairs Office. If the death was natural, the company the foreigner worked for will take charge in dealing with the situation. This is part of the procedures companies agree upon when soliciting to hire foreigners to work for them in China. If the death is unnatural, an investigation needs to be launched and the remains need to be secured till the conclusion of the investigation. In the case of natural death, if the foreigner works in China, the company of the foreigner will be responsible for contacting the foreigner's embassy and their next of kin. If he or she is a tourist, the PSB will be responsible for contacting the embassy. In the event of an unnatural death, the body needs to be secured in a morgue for the remainder of the investigation by the PSB and local police, and then notify the embassy. 
Natural deaths usually don't need an autopsy done unless the family or the embassy requires it. The family or embassy then needs to file a request for autopsy. Unnatural deaths, autopsies are required and becomes the responsibility of the PSB to make sure it's done. In the event of a natural death, the hospital will issue a certificate. If it's an unnatural death, the PSB authorized doctor will issue the certificate. Foreigners are not allowed to be buried in China. The body needs to be repatriated, whole, or cremated, and then sent. China allows friends or companies to hold a simple ceremony or small religious ceremonies at funeral parlors. Foreigners' ashes are not allowed to be cast in public memorial areas in China. This right is reserved and considered only for foreigners that have contributed to China in special ways and then given this honor. In the event of a cremation, the death certificate from the hospital, along with cremation certificate from the funeral parlor, needs to have two copies of each. One copy is kept with the company or the people sending the ashes, and the other is accompanying the ashes being sent. Ashes are placed in a special can and then inserted into another wooden box to be sent. When repatriating whole bodies, there needs to be four certificates to accompany the deceased. Death certificate from the hospital or PSB and needs to be notarized. Anti-corrosion certificate from the funeral parlor. Certificate of quarantine from the epidemic prevention department. Certificate of exit permit for the coffin from the national quarantine office. If you have all four of these certificates present, the customs office may allow the repatriation of the remains. The family members or the embassy and the Chinese government representatives need to be present when going through the personal effects of the deceased. If the family or embassy cannot be there, a notoriety officer can stand in their stead to sign off that everything is accounted for. A list of all belongings is made and everyone present must sign off on that list. If the belongings need to be moved or exported, a special turnover book needs to be applied for. The time, location, people present, numbers, quantities of items needs to be noted in the special book. After everyone has signed, the book needs to be notarized as well. If there is a last will or testament, the authorities will take a photocopy of it and give the original to the family or the embassy. If the foreigner was working in China, their company will write up a report containing all the information from the parts 1 to 7 in it. If the foreigner wasn't working in China, the PSB will write up a conclusion report. The report goes to the Department of Foreign Affairs Office. When looking at all this, it makes perfect sense that dealing with foreigners who pass away can be a long and arduous procedure. Never mind the absolute heartache families and friends have to deal with on top of it. When traveling, keep this in mind and remember to stay safe. Purchasing travel insurance could help deal with a lot of the costs that these procedures and take some of the weight off responsibility off of your family. Please, if you have any questions, please feel free to post it in the comments below. I'll try to answer you as best I can. Please don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.